Mammography in conjunction with physical examination is still the preferred method of screening for breast cancer. Here are some things to consider before having your mammogram. Don't schedule your mammogram for the week before your period if your breasts are usually tender during this time. The best time for a mammogram is one week following your period. Always inform your doctor or x-ray technologist if there is any possibility that you are pregnant. In addition, it is recommended that you do not wear deodorant, talcum powder, or lotion under your arms or on your breast on the day of the exam. These can appear on the mammogram as calcium spots. Talk to your technologist performing the exam about any breast symptoms or changes you have noticed to your breast. This will help the tech to focus on areas of concern and discuss any changes with the radiologist, hopefully before you leave. Bring your prior mammograms with you or ask well in advance of your appointment for them to be mailed to the x-ray department. The radiologist will compare previous to your current exam. Ask when your results will be available. Don't assume the results are normal if you don't hear from your doctor or your mammography facility. 5% to 15% of screening mammograms require more testing, such as additional mammograms or an ultrasound. Most of these tests turn out normal. If there is an abnormal finding, a follow-up biopsy may have to be performed. Most of the biopsies confirm that no cancer is present. It is estimated that a woman who has yearly mammograms between ages 40 and 49 has about a 30% chance of having a false positive mammogram at some point in that decade, and about a 7% to 8% chance of having a breast biopsy within a 10-year period. The estimate of false positive mammograms is about 25% for women ages 50 or older. As a nurse practitioner working in a very busy OBGYN practice, I've had the challenge and opportunity to see many women with concerns about changes to their breast. Recently, a woman came to me with complaints of pain in both breasts. Upon physical examination, there were no lumps felt, but her right nipple was inverted. I ordered a diagnostic mammogram, which revealed a suspicious area in her left breast. Every concern is valid. You know your own body and what is different about your body. The changes that are concerning to you should be taken seriously and discussed with your health care provider. If you notice or are concerned about a lump in or near your breast or under your arm, thick or firm tissue in or near your breast or under your arm, nipple discharge or tenderness, a nipple pulled back inverted into the breast, itching or skin changes such as redness, scales, dimples or puckers, or a change in the breast size or shape, please see your healthcare provider for further intervention. When there's an abnormal finding on physical exam or a radiologic test, a biopsy is usually recommended. This procedure allows a small amount of tissue to be removed and examined. There are several different types of breast biopsy procedures. Biopsies can be performed using local anesthetic just to numb the area that is to be biopsied, or general anesthetic will allow you to sleep through the whole procedure. The type of biopsy performed will depend upon the location and size of the breast, lump, or abnormality. Because of the variety of biopsies, it is important for you to discuss with your provider the best choice for you. The first is a fine needle aspirate. This is usually recommended to differentiate a cyst from a lump. A very thin needle is used to withdraw fluid and or tissue for analysis. The next is a core biopsy. This removes more tissue with a larger needle into the lump. Another way is an open or surgical biopsy, typically requiring general anesthetic. A surgeon removes part or all of the lump or suspicious area through an incision into the breast. 
there are two types of surgical biopsies. During an incisional biopsy, a small part of the lump is removed, whereas during an excisional biopsy, the entire lump is removed. In some cases, if the breast lump is very small and deep and is difficult to locate, the wire localization technique may be used during surgery. With this technique, a special wire is placed into the lump under x-ray guidance. The surgeon follows this wire to help locate the breast lump. More and more women are asking for procedures that are less traumatic and less scarring to the breast tissue. Minimally invasive biopsies are made possible with the use of special instruments and techniques. The stereotactic biopsy finds the exact location of a breast lump or suspicious area by using a computer and mammogram results to create a 3D dimensional picture of the breast. A sample of tissue is removed with a needle. The ultrasound guided biopsy is a technique that uses a computer and a transducer which sends out ultrasonic sound waves to create images of the breast lump or mass. This technique helps to guide the needle biopsy. Both the stereotactic and ultrasound guided biopsies can be assisted by what is called a mammotome breast biopsy system which is also called a vacuum assisted biopsy. With the mammotome, a tube is inserted into the breast, lump, or mass. The breast tissue is gently suctioned into the tube and a rotating knife removes the tissue. Since 1999, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the use of the handheld mammotome device. Recently published literature has suggested that women with certain risks would benefit from a breast MRI or a magnetic resonance imaging test which uses magnetic fields and radio waves to make computer images of the breast. No radiation or x-rays are used. There is still a lot to learn about this technology, but this additional radiologic test will provide additional information about the breast tissue that may even prevent unnecessary breast biopsies.